snowing. Look at that. And I'm sitting next to some Holly. Hello, Holly. Hello, Holly. How are you? Hey, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, Cool Crap We Love, episode number 26. It's been 26 episodes. Uh, my name is John Peasy, and welcome. I see people popping in already uh, here on Facebook Live, and we're on YouTube, I think. We're on Facebook Live at a couple pages, as well as also uh, tonight on striketv.org, which is a great channel to check out for other great content as well. And welcome. We have a lot to go through tonight, so we're going to go through some uh, great holiday gifts that were given to people when you were kids, such as toys when for Christmas morning or for Hanukkah, if you were celebrating that crazy eight days of craziness. But first, let's bring on um, the guy who I work with, the co-host here, who is called tonight Walt Big Santa P, is what you're going to see here. <laughs> Welcome, Walt Big Santa P. There you go. Oh, it's just Papa Leo. Okay. But when there's three of us on the screen, when we have the real Santa Claus come on, it says Walt, Walt Big Santa P. It I does. It does. So we, yeah. By the way, I, just before the show, I said, you have probably had to go do that. And I said, and, and you said no, but I do I, every time. I didn't get a chance to go do that. I planned on doing that. It was a do. <laughs> I, I, do. I have to do it. <laughs> I didn't even change. I'm still wearing, look, I'm wearing sweatshirt. Yeah. Yeah. Very festive of you. Yeah. Very festive. How are you doing, Mr. Wall? I am doing good. I'm doing good. It's a beautiful, it was a beautiful day today. It was almost 60 degrees. Uh, getting ready for my uh, exodus of New York State at one point in the next five or six years. Oh, oh okay. You're making it sound like, you know, after New Year, you're doing something. No, no, no. No, no I got about five years, and then I'm gone, man. And where you gone to? I'm going South Carolina, Florida, somewhere down there. You know what's really nice? Asheville, North Carolina. I've been down there. It's in a little mountainous, down in a valley. It's beautiful. Really nice, cool hip place. I want beach. I want sand. Do you really? You're into the water? I like the sand. I like that whole, that whole hanging out at a tiki bar and 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 watching it, hearing the ocean come in. Sometimes at nighttime I can't sleep. I go, Alexa, play ocean sounds, and and I sleep to the waves. Really, you're really into that, huh? Really, I. Well, do you hear that, Alexa? I said over your Alexa. You, how did you did you say her name? How did that happen? That's amazing. I did. I said, Alexa, play, play, Alexa, play sounds of the ocean. <laughs> she can't hear you now, apparently. Steph, uh, Steph Biatch. You, maybe you're married to her. So uh, this, this is interesting. You know, today we're supposed to be doing a show about what? About Christmas gifts and Hanukkah gifts. I've never gotten a Hanukkah gift, so I, I don't know what that is. But I, I've heard comedians talk about it. Uh, I know what it is. Uh, I would assume that the Christmas gifts I got all at once, they could probably space them out over eight days. Same you know, thing. Well, I, I believe, and maybe I'm wrong, and somebody could tell us if we're wrong in the chat, but I believe that, uh, what are you drinking, uh, Mr. Santa, Big Santa Papalio? I'm telling you, it's by coconut. By I love coconut. Okay. Brings me uh, the islands. But our, new sponsor, islands. our new sponsor, by coconut? By coconut. Uh <laughs> yeah, Charlie for sure. You could move in with Jackie Martling. He lives on the water. He does. He actually does, but that's on the cold water. <laughs> Three quarters of the year. On the base shore there. So, uh, you know, I maybe people tell us if I'm wrong or right, but you tell me if I believe. So Hanukkah being it's longer and you have several days. and right. You have, right? I think the gifts were a little bit smaller. I mean, I remember I've seen like, well, even I've seen so many people on Christmas morning they have trees full of all these stuff, especially kids with tons of toys and all that, like really over the top, very Americanized. And then you see, I, I remember like uh, on Hanukkah, you'd get like, you know, something. <laughs> you get like the left sneaker. Tuesday. And the second day, you'd get the right sneaker. Wednesday. And then Thursday. <laughs> what would you get on Thursday? You'd get the laces. <laughs> Thursday, you would get the late one one set of lace, one lace, <laughs> and then on Friday, you would get the the next lace. But I believe uh, Monica was smaller. I think you get smaller gifts each day rather than this over the top Americanized uh, Christian. Yeah, but what's the difference? I mean, I, how much smaller could they have been? I mean, 
you know, could well, you get could you get a game? I put it up, you know, like Candyland or Monopoly. Yeah, you could. I, I could be wrong, but I could be wrong. But I believe that you know, I remember seeing my friends who were playing dreidel, 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 and all that kind of stuff, the chocolate coins, and and it was always like it's it was like it was almost like stocking gifts compared to Christmas morning in my mind's yeah. eye. Now, I could be wrong. But that's just my perspective. So all right, well, somebody we have any Jewish yeah. people that know? Well, if there's any good Jewish people in the audience. It's Hanukkah. Good, good, as opposed to we always have bad ones. No, you know, but I'm making the point that if there's any good Jewish people in the audience, it's Friday night. It's Shabbos. So oh. right now, they should not be here. It's dark. All right, I forgot. It's Friday. <laughs> Unless they just turn on cool crap before they go. Before they go in. Right. Maybe they have Goyim come in and turn it on for them. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I hope so. I hope so. Just just so they can watch the show. All right. So let's talk. Let's talk about some of the toys that we got when we grew up. Okay, and I added some more. You sent me a list, and I have even more. Do and, it. And there's a lot to go through, so I'm going to try to go through them really quickly. Are you ready? Bring them out because we want to bring on Charles Edward Hall, who is the Santa Claus, the most famous Santa Claus, I think, in the United States, if I not the world. I would imagine you're exactly right. Yep. If I, not the world. And he's a really nice guy off the air as as out of his Santa garb. Yes, and, uh, and he has a great background of theater that we were not aware of. So it's really cool. Yes. All right. First one coming up. Uh, here's something that you sent me. Ready? Boom. The Vic a Victrola. <laughs> a Victrola. Yeah. I, I loved it. I actually, uh, I had one. Uh, it had a blue bottom and it had like a psychedelic red, white, and blue type of top. Uh, my brother had a Donald Duck one where the arm came mm -hmm. over and that was the needle that came down. Now, it's funny you mention this because I had a Victrola too, but I remember in the 70s as a kid, I was given a toy and I looked it up and added it to this. You gave me this. It was called Close and Play. Does that sound familiar to you? I do. I, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Close and Play phonograph. And it was plastic. It was really crappy. And you would put the, I guess, the record. The record, a, the 45 in there. Yep. Yeah. 45s. And you'd put those 45s in there and just close it and it would play. Yeah, you didn't have to, like lay the needle on it or anything. It was just, you know, you know. It's funny because kids, to, if you're a young person today with MP3s and all this other kind of stuff, you got to look at this like, what are you talking about the needle? Yeah. <laughs> How cool was that, though, man? You it would take your record player over to somebody's house, plug it in with like around seven records, and you would listen to the same seven seven records, you know, all day. Yeah. Exactly, all day, and now Boy, you have. Life sucked. We're really, we were really old, but this was something. And now, when I start thinking of this, now do you see next to that picture of the close and play? There's sure. a thing that's just in multicolors record. Yeah, this leads me to believe. Do you recall uh, inside the the cereal, cereal they, boxes? Yeah, they used to give records sometimes, and they were like not little, in them, on them. It was they were part of the cereal box. And you'd rip it off and take the perforations off. <laughs> you'd have to cut the record out <laughs> off of the box. And it was a 45 that could actually play, but it was really floppy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I forgot all about that. Now, I remember on Kellogg's or like uh, on cereal boxes. And uh, that's what that record looks like to the right. That little one that says record or multi. It looked like that on a cereal box. Yeah. That's, like that's, that. what it, that's what it looks like. Yeah. And I was fascinated as a kid as how could they do that and print it on a box and you could play, you know? It didn't have the big hole like the 45. It had that little hole like the 33, the big album. Right. That's right. And uh, the needle was in the lid. That is correct. That is correct, Bob Rumble. When I was growing up, we got something every day. As we got older, it was not every day, but we did get one big gift. Okay, now, Charlie... Fisher was raised Jewish, so Charlie. <laughs> I don't uh, think he was a practicing Jew, was he? he, he uh, I want to ask him this question. So, did you get gifts that were small gifts along every day? Every day. Yeah, I believe that's the way I saw it with all my friends. Machine Gun Alley. Oh, yeah, that was, I do remember that. I forgot all about Machine Gun Alley. Wow, that's a good point. All right, moving right along here. Bingo. <laughs> <Batman> <laughs> <Underwood>. <laughs> I thought that was awesome because you know, um, I I still wear those. Yeah, well, they, who, they, who says we're not? I mean, uh, yeah, they have big ones, but back then is when they turned it on to us. But the Batman on the ruse and the Superman on the ruse, and if 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 
if your mother didn't know any better, she got you the Aquaman on the ruse that nobody even knew who Aquaman was. And look what it says. One top and one brief, and it goes 50% combined cotton with 50% Dacron polyester. That was a big name, Dacron polyester. For some reason, Dacron. what's Dacron? Like, we really know, like, even then or now. Dacron. Dacron. Dacron is actually the number one cause of cancer. <laughs> Very funny. All right. <laughs> this, this was great. Ready? Boom. Battle. Love it. What what did the kids say? You sank my battleship. <laughs> yeah, every time. And that and and this was a great game. It was a, a supposedly a strategy game, but it was really silly. But I wanted this. I had it many times and played it many many times. Great. great. Yeah, that that was great. I mean, the battleship the battleship had four pegs on it. So you so so the premise of the game, if you did if you if you if you don't know what it is, they gave you an aircraft carrier. Which was five pegs, five five pegs, and you had to guess. It was it was almost like a graph graph paper. A one, and you'd say hit or miss. And if you hit, then you knew you had one of their five ships. The toughest one to find was that little U boat that was only two That's pegs. Right. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, do, I remember that. Yeah, it was great. It was good. It was actually a simple, fun game, and I like the way it all folded up in a little carry case. That's carry it. Case. That's it. Pegs all, right. all this, stay right in there. This is another classic game here. Yeah, there you go. Shoots and ladders. I don't know. I wasn't crazy about it. I don't mean to be negative, but I wasn't crazy about it. But it was a really popular, simple game for kids. Very, very. You know what? I brought the only reason I put that on there mm -hmm. is because if I remember right, there was like a hundred squares, and you had to, you know, roll a die, a die, and you, you'd move that many squares. But when you got almost to the top to end the game, there was a. So what would happen? <laughs> so. The premise of the game is shoots and ladders. If you landed on a square that had a ladder, it would bring you from like from, from square 18 to like square 62. But if you hit a, a shoot and you hit like square 99, it brought you all the way down to like square 12. <laughs> it's just, you know what I'm laughing about? The whole world right now is watching like CNN and Fox News with Hunter Biden. <laughs> 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 and you're telling me about it. you get to the top square and you slide <laughs> slide it down. Back and to by the way, as well, you were special. <laughs> That's right. why, but you'd always cheat because if you knew you were going to land, if you did quick math in your head and you were right. going to land on that big long shoot, you'd just pass it. You didn't you'd count wrong. If you counted wrong, yeah. But if the, if the other person wasn't watching, you count. Yes. However, that's Russian dis disinformation. Basically. Sorry. All right. Yeah. So here we go. Color forms. Great. Great. I mean, even when you get older, it's just still fun and silly to play with this. It's just one of those dumb things that just feels good for some reason. You could you could take those things and 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 put a person's body on it, and then you could put like a dress on the girl, or you yeah. put pants on the girl. Yeah, you put a red shirt on her, but then you change the blue shirt and the guy. Brilliant really idea. The what? LGTB color forms for 2021. <laughs> right? What do we do? You, you you mix up men and women's clothes and stuff, and parts and stuff. Make LGTB color forms. Be a big oh, hit. I thought you were talking about the TV LG. No, I'm no. no. Okay. <laughs> you got to give me the rest of those letters. You can't oh, just sorry. say LG. That's lesbian and gay. You forgot all the other ones. I know, but this would be a funny idea. Make one specifically for that market. You know. Yeah, that. You know what? Actually, that's pretty good because now you can. Everybody wears everything. You're right. Look at you. Nobody's wearing this. this Nobody's wearing Santa this. Jacket. You are Santa the Claus. Yeah, uh, look at this. Is, this is what Herman Munster would wear at, at Christmas. <laughs> and that black shirt in the middle. How about G.I. Joe, the classic? Yeah, but I did that one on purpose because that oh, one has the kung fu grip. Oh, yeah. I remember that. The kung fu <laughs> grip. You can get G.I. Joe, but it really hurt somebody, right? Yeah. Yeah, the kung fu grip. But that, yeah, GI Joe was the was the thing, man. Now this is interesting because GI Joe I really wasn't into too much. I don't like the, the action figure things when I was a kid. Was like, oh, that's for girls' dolls. That, that was. I Meanwhile, well, I'm a ventriloquist for a living now. But back, <laughs> back in those days, it was Magic. like for girls back in the days. And then suddenly, uh, my brother, who was a little younger than I, had, had was into this stuff, and I had bought the GI Joe. That goes to outer space. It came with a space still a space capsule. Yeah, I, remember, I had it. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And there was an arm that you put your hand in to pick up moon rocks with. Well, that I didn't have. That was cool. So my brother, who was younger, had this. 
What is that? Action, oh, Action Jackson. That's correct. Action Jackson. Now, today, it's a movie of an African-American man that's like a superhero or something. Carl but, Weathers. Carl Weathers was that's in correct. it. That's correct. But 90s, 70s, early yeah. 70s, this was a, a, a boy's doll that you play with that did like cool, you know, that he saved the world or whatever. And my I remember. Name is Bold Adventure is my, oh, my, Action Jackson is my name. Bold Adventure is my game. Think of what you can want to be and call on me. Let's see that. That's the the trademark. Yeah, look at that, yeah. John. You, I don't. I don't want you ever to say that again. <laughs> By the way, I'm thinking about that that GI Joe. You should make a puppet GI Joe. A, oh, you and know what? GI Joe puppet. That's actually a brilliant, brilliant. And Landon, the, get on it. Landon, get on it. By the way, that's a great Rock'em Sick'em Robots. By the way, that's one of the things we have a picture of because that was one of you my did? toys. You yeah. did the Rock'em Sock'ems. I, I threw them in, and these are still yours. Okay, here we go. Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how that came in here. Sorry. <laughs> I still, it came up somehow. The Epstein didn't kill himself doll, and uh, I thought I it would be one. topical. I want one. Epstein didn't kill himself doll. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love right. it. I love, I love it. it. Just, where would you get that? I don't even know where you would get that. I would assume Amazon sells everything. Yeah, I, I would buy this is that is the holiday gift of the season. <laughs> I mean, you know what you could do? <clears throat> you could get for Han the first day of Hanukkah, the Epstein alive doll. And then the then you get this doll. Epstein didn't kill himself doll. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then the you get the doll get that fell asleep when he when he was murdered. And then you get the Epstein Island that they could all go play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you get the whole Epstein Island, and then, then you can get the Giselle, the Gel, Giselle Maxwell, Gislaine, whatever her name is. You get that doll. Gislaine. Accessories. Gislaine, Gislaine. Oh, God. All right, here we go. This is great. One of my favorites. This, you know, did it, by man. The way, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up. Did you have this as a kid as well? I did, man. And I remember going to two guys to buy the cars. They were about three, three fifty a piece. But if I'm not That's mistaken, then? they were three fifty a piece. Yeah. The you car? know why? Because they went on the track, and they were real-looking race cars. Didn't they have the little stem that came out of the car and went into the groove of the track? At the top. and then you... No, on the bottom of it. It had a little stem came out of it, and you put it in the track of the car, and that's what made it go electric around. Not electric around. That You had a you, – there was a – there's a – you see this on the box. See the yellow thing there? There's a handle there that the heart is spring-loaded, and you pull it back, and you – it hard and as you whack it hard it throws the car into nah, the that was a different one that's johnny lightning look oh well, then i he, got the wrong one you see, the, the wrong see the way you see the way the kid can move his hand back and forth from left to right yeah that that, I, that one car, i didn't have as the car is rolling around the track and it comes back up you're it's it is clicking with that little pin it's clicking in holding it and you're pushing it with speed you're giving it the the, the hook the push see i had the electric one my father had a job Actually, this Johnny Lightning thing was really cool. I, I really remember thinking it was the greatest. Look at all the kids like in the 1960s. <laughs> it's a little, little the, the little Mike Morse cartoons up there looking over. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's this. This is classic. I uh, loved it, man. Everybody. That was awesome because you get light bright for Christmas, right? And you'd have all those pegs. <laughs> so it was a blackboard that had little holes in it. And they would give you patterns, and it would say, put a red peg here. And they would light up the pegs from the light bulb that was in back of it. But over the year, you would lose the pegs. So next year, you would have to buy pegs for Christmas. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I also remember something interesting about this. Um, what was the song? I, mean, you, I know it, but I'm asking you because I think you, you have that me weird memory. I do have that weird memory, but I don't. I'm thinking of the Slinky song. No, it was like right. right making things with light. Oh yeah, light, <laughs> right. Da, 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 da. <laughs> that light that light bulb went in there was the same light bulb that you cooked a cookie in the Easy Bake Oven. Easy Bake Oven, yeah, that's the one that your sister was cooking in the. Can we were like little goofball kids. This is the garbage we grew up with. I know. No, no iPads. No. Now you no. know this, this is no. this was as a kid, as a boy, this was every boy's dream as a kid. What is it? You know why I did that? Mini bike. You know wow. why I did that? Why? Because one Christmas 
me and my brother woke up and there were two green mini bikes sitting under the Christmas tree. So your parents wanted to get rid of you. Yes. Because well, we couldn't... weren't even old enough to drive. We weren't even old enough to drive them by ourselves. This is like when we were like 10. But wait a minute. Is this like, did you have like, see, this is the mini bike frame with the uh, actual lawnmower. Yeah, that's what it. we had. Now, a lot of kids like would make their own. They put it on their bike. But this is like if you got the frame and ordered the frame and put this in there and that's the real you had the real deal. We had the real deal. Not I remember me. we used to just ride them in the courtyard, the schoolyard right across the street from our house. Mm -hmm. That was the, the extent of it. You couldn't ride them in the street because, you know, um, yeah, you get a ticket and rested. They bring you back to your parents. Yeah, yeah I, I remember like getting in trouble for this, too. And I was I wasn't even old enough to take that out without my father going out. That's how young we were when we got those. But, you know, you couldn't do it because back then police weren't defunded. So we we <laughs> we so well, I remember this and, and you'll 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 like this story that my father and me and my brother and my uncle Eddie. We all took those mini bikes downtown Jersey City by the Colgate clock where yeah. Colgate Palmolive used to be. Sure. And we drove – that's where my father grew up and uh, Uncle Eddie grew up. And we drove around. I mean, we busted into bars with these things like we were motorcycle guys. Let me tell you something. That was the most fun I've ever had during Christmas time because it was almost like we were bikers with these things. It was it was awesome. It felt cool. You felt like a big cheese. You know – uh I, I had, I, I was like a pre I don't know, I had like a put together kind of, you know, botched up piece of bicycle with a motor on it, but it was still just as fun. And I do remember getting in trouble with the cops because they would pull you over. And then later on, as the 70s moved on, they came out with mopeds. Mopeds, which which was just a, a motorcycle with pedals on it. And that's how they got away with it because it was a bike. But it really wasn't a motorcycle. It was a bike with a little yeah. motor on it. And, it. and it was really, but it was huge. I remember they even had a place where I lived. There was a moped rental, but you could go rent a moped for the day and kill Down it. Shore. Jersey yeah. Shore, you can rent mopeds and go all over. The reason the reason they, they called it a moped was because it was almost it was a it was a motorized bike, which they couldn't sell you because you'd need a license and all of that. But if they right. put pedals on it, then it was a bike. And so you were able around. to get around. Everyone around. around that rule. Now these, boom. Soccer boppers. It was great. It was great. <laughs> you could beat each other to a pulp with these things. You know, everybody says, oh, they don't hurt because there's their air in them. And yeah, yeah, no, you get hit with one of those and then hit your head on the coffee table because you fell. It hurts. Not only that, the thing was sewn together and the seams would scrape your face as you get hit. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. Now why'd you why'd you throw these in? Because it sucked when you got clothes. When you got you socks. Got clothes. Yeah, you always like oh, oh like oh thanks. Yeah, thanks, grandma. I got a tie. No, when he was a kid, who wanted socks? I know, but people always bought you socks and underwear for Christmas. I don't know. It was like one of those things. You take those things and you throw them to the side as quick as you open them up so you can get to the next box. Very true. It was oh, I remember as a kid on my birthday party. When kids would come over and everything, they give hand you like the gift, and you take the card out, rip it open, and go like this. See if there's any money <laughs> in the I gotta be honest, I still do that. <laughs> I'm like sure my birthday. Uh, like, I remember not to put anything in that envelope. Look now, all right, uh, bro. This no, bro. Yeah, I had every one of them except that Tarzan guy at the end, whoever that is. Now, what were these like little plastic figurine kind of yeah man oh bro these were the these were the, the joint these were the i'm telling you man i love these dolls if you had these dolls right now you know how rich you'd be seriously these are the real deal these and, and these are the ones that it looked exactly like the ones that i had man and these were the oh. superhero dolls that you played with they faintly look very familiar to me. I remember them looking really colorful, and but I I don't remember. I just kind of faintly remember them. You are a right. superhero guy, bro. You weren't a dog I, guy. And now you're a doll guy. I like superheroes. All right. You threw this vintage Viewmaster in here. This was the best. Because I, people who don't understand what this is, this was that the black thing on the side there with the two where you put your eyes. You would take that little circle, it had little negatives in there or color pictures, and you could actually watch a movie. But it well, was only about I, 20 slides. 
It was kind of like a movie, but they yeah, did. It wasn't a with... movie, but it was still pictures from a movie. Yeah, and it was cool because they looked like alive, like 3D almost. They were like alive. Yeah. It was pretty cool. It was it was really popular back in the day. Now you put this in here, the many – oh, I put this in here, the many – Yeah, I didn't do that. I, I was looking at, up at Action Jackson, and this is the way his transition went over the years. Action Jackson looks like he went from – he went through many different personality changes over his life, his lifetime. Uh, let's see. All right. Did you give me you, this? No, you did. All right. So I wanted to throw in something for the ladies. <laughs> so there you go. The Dinah. What is it? Dinah Shaw? Who is it? Dinah Shaw? Is that I know. Dinah Mike. Dinah Mike. Anyway, this is something. That's gross. perfect for Hanukkah because there's one doll for each day. There you go. Beautiful thing. Uh, then this was Tickle Me Obama. Did you have one of those? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't get that. Now, here's something that I thought was great. I, and this is going back even earlier than my time a little bit. Yeah, I like that. I forget, I forgot about Gumby. And B Gumby was cool. Gumby is, I mean, it was a simple cartoon, but he would, like, lift one leg and just go, jizz. <laughs> it was like a really weird little thing. He, and, was, he wasn't a cartoon, though. That was like a claymation. claymation. So and somebody had, would have to take a, a clay doll and move it and then take a still shot and then move his arm a little bit and take a shot. And that's how they, they did that. Yeah, you're right. And he had, didn't he have Pokey? Was that the horse? Pokey was the little orange horse he had. All right. I want to bring on my friend Santa, but before I will buzz it through here real quick. Uh, here All we right. go. <laughs> Super mini balls. <laughs> These were great because if you hit them hard enough on the ground, Boom. they would go so high in the air. And look at you know why they stopped making them. 50,000 pounds of compressed energy, it says. Yes. Do you know why they stopped making them? Whammo. Remember whammo? Because you know why they stopped? Because idiots were taking them and throwing them into the ground as hard as they can and not moving their faces, and they would come up and hit you in the eye. Yeah. because that's Take your what, eye right out. Because we're stupid people. We're stupid. Yes, we are. That's what we did. Okay. Here's another one of the color forms. But in they this one. This was like hours of fun, too. I remember Kenner's Spirograph, and this was like all the little plastic round pieces that you put in there. And I don't know why there was a joy in spinning something around and making a design that you couldn't actually do. I don't know if you're looking back at well, it. Well, it was, it was symmetric. It was Everything was symmetric. You could make a, a circle, you know, 10 circles in a row, but you couldn't do them symmetrically. This thing had <laughs> some kind of gears on it with a you'd stick a pen in a little hole and then the it, the gears would go around almost like a uh you know a bike chain and it would make a beautiful art picture for you, but you got sick of it after a while. I don't know, it was kind of interesting, but why we like that, I don't know. And look what it's a simple and fascinating way to draw a million marvelous patterns. <laughs> Who wrote that copy? We like that because we didn't have an iPhone, that's why. All right, so I want to go through here a couple of, of <clears throat> excuse me. Here's well, I threw a couple things that you didn't see. The classic thing we play with yo yo's. Yo yo. Great. That wasn't a Duncan, though. I don't know if that was a Duncan. I don't know, but we, we used to have Duncan butterfly and all that kind of stuff. It was really cool. <clears throat> and then um here's another one. Sit and spin. <laughs> Remember that? Sit and spin. Yeah, that's awesome. That okay, middle yeah. piece would stay still. The bottom piece you'd sit on and and, and you would just turn yourself around. And uh, all you would do is just get yourself dizzy. Yep. And uh, this was a big thing. I had a younger brother. And so in the late 70s, this came out. And this was huge for people. Big wheel. You Loved it. You loved it. I yeah. broke a girl's arm on there one time. Did you really? Yeah. I said, get on the back. She was standing on the back. Not she didn't want to do it. I, I talked her into it. She fell off of it and broke her arm. Are you serious? Really? What a God. Oh. Debbie Rayside. What was the repercussions of that? I'm not sure. Today, I mean, today really you talk. a house. <laughs> she doesn't talk to me too much today. <laughs> well, she couldn't say hi for a while. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, let me. All right. Here's let's real quickly. I want to. Here's another one. Great one. Perfection. Remember this? Hey, I do remember that. Yeah. Simple, stupid, silly game that you click the tick, 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 tick. You had to do it as quick as the other guy and get them all back. Yeah, but that, that that red knob up top was a timer. Right? Yes, on the timer. That's correct. Okay. So you had to do it in a certain amount of time. How about this? Like I want to bring in here really quick. Here we go. My uh, creepy crawlers. You make those. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure those weren't toxic. That that <laughs> stuff. It was. It was liquid that went into a mold. You baked it, and it came out as a like a Rubber. gummy bear. 
Right. I got, yeah, kind of. And they later on made them into candy with stuff, too. Now, this is my favorite toy. And then I want to go real quick into something negative. But this is my – when I was a kid, every year, this is what I want all the time. You're setting up negative? Yes. No, this is not negative. This is the racing – these racing tracks, to me, as a kid, were the greatest. You had two controllers. You had the cars. And yeah. It was just hours and hours of fun until you burnt out the brushes on the bottom of those things. And That's you know, what I was talking about, this one. That's what you. That's elect. That was electric racing track. That's the one I. I that's the one I had. Yeah, Johnny. Re, Johnny, the other one, Johnny uh, Lightning. Johnny Lightning. Yeah, I didn't have that. I had them both. Now, here's a couple quick things, real quick. Negative things that are positive, which is not a good word in 2020. Play-Doh, great fun, delicious. It's delicious. Yes. It's non-toxic, but. <laughs> I don't know about you, and it came in all different colors, different size boxes and everything else, and they had things that later on came out that you could put them in and squeeze it and make, like, strange figures and squares and stars. But any time that any parent gave this to their kid, immediately, like, I don't know, when you want it again, oh, no, no, no more Play-Doh. Got stuck on my rug. We're not doing that again. Yes. <laughs> Remember that? Right. You know, what was your favorite thing to make with, with Play-Doh? A hamburger. Yeah, Just maybe. Just pat it down. Hamburger. Yeah. But when the when the dough when the, you know the the red dough matched mixed with the white dough, it but became like a marble. But then you try to pull all the little pieces. Yeah, you out. try to pull it out, and you got a little red in it. You know, How about great. this? Ants in the pants. Love it. Loved great. it. A lot of fun. That's that. That's how the game quarters was invented. All right, real quick, I'm bust through two more of these. Just a couple quick negatives. Ready? This is things that we kill yourself. <laughs> right. I remember them. Buckets. They're like stilts. Buckets yeah, they that you walked on. Sand buckets with ropes. Yeah, they were sturdy sand buckets, but right. they were Speaking buckets. Breaking your arm and breaking your leg. This is a good way to do it. Good way to twist an ankle. <laughs> and another one, talk about now. I'm I'm not being negative, but these are things that shouldn't be on the market. <laughs> I guess that was one of them. Here's the other one: the atomic energy set. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember it, but it doesn't sound good. Yeah, this is in the 50s, like I think late 50s, early 60s, they start coming out with this stuff, the little electronic things and this and that. They had a wood burning kit to have this. And the, you know, I was trying to look at like what's the inappropriate things for the holiday that you give as a holiday gift. And here's another one that's really inappropriate. I found this. It's the Stuff Hug Play Snuggle Superman. And, and look at the doll's face on the front. Of the <laughs> what the hell is that? It says, turn your pillow into one of the biggest. Ever movies? Yeah, I mean, there were there were pillows with with. It's I'm not even gonna go any further. You you get is that the, a hole in his mouth? <laughs> yes, it is. And they made different characters. There was stuff a hug play. Put it's crazy. What did you do with the hole in the mouth? I mean, besides what Gene Trifolo would do with it, I have no idea. I mean, All right, uh, I just want, want to give one thing something that's. Uh, Inappropriate. Last one, and then we got to bring Santa on. I'm, I say we bring Santa on now. I'm, we're burning through time. Bring here. him on. We're ready to go. So uh, I have to thank you for getting this guest tonight. Because um, thank Roger Paul, Roger Paul, and, Paul, and uh, that's right. And uh, Charles Edward Hall. This is interesting too because I was looking up Charles Hall. Now he has a really very career in theater that we just found out about, but also he's really well known for several other things like. Um, his interviews with uh, Risa, uh, Radio City, Christmas Spectacular, TV Movie, Elmo's World, Barney Live in New York City, Dare to Dream, The Rebirth of Radio City Music Hall, Sesame Street Carol as a special guest, and he's written a couple of books as well. So this is super interesting uh, and one of the greatest Sanders ever, and he's here today. The most famous. Famous. Please welcome Charles Edward Hall. I'm going to put him right in the middle, right there. There he is. All right. What's up, Charles? How you doing? Thanks, guys, for having me on. Thanks for coming, and thanks for waiting for us to get in here as we went through all the rhetoric of toys. <laughs> well, I, I remember those. You know, well, I had a uh, uh, my brother actually. My brother Tom had an Astro Base. You remember Astro Base? It was like you know, Astro like Base, kind of late fifties plastic where they landed on the moon and all and. Uh, yeah, I, I know it's fun looking at those. Uh, now, that's you, awesome. Those and you being Santa Claus, everyone, I mean, you must have so many people in your life uh, often say to you, well, you know, I, Santa, can I have this? Can I have that? You must have been getting that all the time for so many kids. Uh, yeah, over yeah, the years. Yeah, yeah. And, and adults, you know. 
Really? It everybody, was, wants, yeah, everybody wants something, you know, and it and it's uh, it, and that's part of it. It uh, must be joyous, though, to be to play Santa Claus. It must be a joyous thing. It it is, it, but you know, I played Scrooge first, and um, I, as a young character actor, I I had I was more into playing Ebenezer Scrooge than wow. Santa because. Scrooge was a larger part of the show, and Santa was just a small part. And um, so, you know, for a long time, Santa was kind of put on the back for me because I had to learn from Ebenezer Scrooge first. Um, but then as the show progressed, Santa became more and more part of my life. And then after I realized what a large part of, of uh, his life and my life were to one another. That's when I wrote my book and, uh, you know, kind of discovered that Santa is real. What do you mean when you say Santa is real? Well, Santa is real in the fact that uh, the spirit of Santa of Christmas is that anyone can be Santa. It's not a matter of dressing up. It's a matter of spirit, of giving, celebrating, um, uh, you know, and obviously the birth of Christ. I mean, that's where right. it all comes from. So it comes from a religious in belief. Um, uh, it, so, you know, that's, and I think that's part of what, if you can adopt that to your own life in a positive manner, uh, then what you believe in, you can manifest. And if that's a joy and happiness and healthiness, uh, then that's, that's all possible, but it's not like turning on a light. You know, there takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of focus. You uh, you must be you must be ecstatic when when kids come up to you. Uh, I mean, obviously they must ask you for the craziest things, but yeah. just that that feeling of having a kid come up and 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 almost like meeting you know Bruce Springsteen for for an older person. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it is. And, you know, I, I've learned a lot from those children. That, but it that seems like he had to come from the Ebenezer to the yeah. Santa Claus. He had to go from one extreme to the other. And by the way, right. Ebenezer is the kind of like you love to hate character. Right, right. Right? I mean, so yeah. th even though you hate him, you kind of love him, too. You kind of love to hate him. Well, it's great <laughs> to play, too. It's a great character to play. Yeah. You know, with you. I, you know, I, I mentioned in the book that, uh, you know, when I was doing Scrooge at the very end, I would fall down on my knees and, uh, uh, you know, uh, redeem, beg forgiveness and go through that whole end of the speech. And um, a stagehand, uh, I walked off stage and a stagehand was there and he said, you know, Charles, that was, that was really a really nice piece of acting you were doing there. And I told him, I said, I, I wasn't acting. <laughs> right. Yeah. It it was real. And it was like the therapy of falling on your knees and weeping in front of six thousand people. It's the greatest therapy you can have. And then then no one not know it's you, you know. I mean, uh so That's true. uh, you know, it, it was yeah, I, I love doing it. But also after I started playing Santa for so long, I started uh finding uh, really, uh, that that true character. Uh, that's why I think that Santa is uh, uh, universal. That it doesn't have to be a, a, a an old uh, fat white guy uh, with a beard. It can be a woman. It can be a, 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 a person of color. It can be any race, color, creed, because it goes beyond that. Right. It's the spirit. Of it's the spirit of it. Yeah, hmm. that's a pretty deep analogy of it too. That's like a really deep view of it too. But I, I, I see definitely see the point. But you know, as a kid growing up, uh, the belief, well, beliefs. There's there's a big difference between beliefs, yeah, and knowings, right? I mean, yeah. if you believe it, like if I tell, I believe Walt looks foolish in that jacket right now. <laughs> But I also know that for a fact. <laughs> right. So it's the same. <laughs> no, but the difference is between beliefs and, and knowing something like what he's saying is that when you believe in something, 
it's given to you or it's it's uh it's something that you base on some what someone's told you or you've read or it's a belief right. right but it's not it may not be a fact it's a belief but but this this right. whole santa thing what he's talking about i i believe what you're saying with the fate with faith and that's everything really deep that's really is deep really, is it really deep yeah yeah. Am I going to deep? Uh, yeah it is but you know that's that's really the uh uh the deeper you go, the more you understand. And uh, that's why, uh, again, in the book, uh, Santa uh, becomes uh, a, a, a kind of a subconscious character of, of my own subconsciousness. Tell us, it tell was, us more uh, about the book, because uh, people and I, I'm going to bring up the book and bring a picture of it up here, but I, I want, I, I don't, people may not be aware. By the way, I hate, I don't want to cover your face. Oh, go ahead, yeah, cover my face, please. I'm not <laughs> moving. <laughs> I cover his face. Oh, thanks, okay. man. Thanks. It looks better than the jacket. You wear that well. <laughs> but this is uh, this is Charles Edward Hall's book called Santa Claus is for Real. And uh, we're going to put the link to it on uh, Amazon as well as put it on, on Facebook, too. Yeah, I'm going I'm to put the link in the Facebook uh, right now so people could actually purchase this book. But tell us. Tell us more about this book, uh, Charles, because I, I like to understand this. Well, book. It, it, it started uh, uh, as a memoir of, of how I became Santa and how I um, have been doing it for 33 years. And uh, it, it's a story of uh, uh, belief. Uh, it it it's a uh, it's written as a fable um so as i was saying that santa and my subconscious uh becomes a real character he becomes someone that actually is outside myself when actually when playing santa and i talk to santa um i'll be in my dressing room and i'll look in the mirror and i'll see santa and i'll have it i'll have a talk with him uh so uh, and that's and that's one of the great things about having to play a character for so many years that uh, I'm giving an opportunity to uh, again go deep and discover you know new things about this this uh, mythical character every time I play it and every year that I do it. And it's interesting too because you could you could tell that Charles is an actor. You could tell. Yeah, you could tell. Yeah. He could, he's, he's got that. He's got that. Like he's reading a story at you know, no, it's, well, he, I it's you know what I consider myself a storyteller. <laughs> you are, you definitely are. Yeah, yeah, and you guys are as well. That, no, that, we're not. Look at his yeah. jacket. He's talking. <laughs> what what story? There's no story here. here. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is cold. This is all we want to cold. tell you that he's blind. You're wearing your story. <laughs> you are the story. Now, Charles, have you ever, ever, I mean, you, you do 200 performances a year. You've been doing it for 33 years. Do you ever just get up one day and say, you know, I don't want to do this today? <laughs> you know, no. Uh, Never. You know what? Every performance is different. Every performance. He's right. And, and as an actor, I, I can work within a certain realm, uh, but... You know, when I'm doing the show, there it there are two cast. Sometimes I'll have three sets of children. Uh, I I mean, sometimes I'll have three different Mrs. Clauses, uh, <laughs> and the audience is lucky bastard. Too. Yeah, the audience is. You know, that's their their first show. So uh, I get a lot of energy from them when I'm doing it because. Uh, it's the, it's the, they haven't seen it before. Uh, but like you, you have a cold or you woke up with a headache and you're just like, yeah. you know what? <sighs> yeah. He's well, that's a, why you have to have a good, uh, you have to have a good method. You have to have a technique. He's a trained like, actor. He puts his stuff aside and does what he's got to yeah, do. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's like a job. bricklayer, you know, uh, yeah. you, you, you might have a sore back or your hands, but you got to lay those bricks anyway, because you've learned how to do it. You know, you you can you can do it in the best way that's possible for you, and yeah, it's hard. It's very difficult. Walty, yeah. you have, you have no taste in clothes, and you still put it on anyway. <laughs> there you go. I love this jacket. 
I like the jacket. I, I do. It. I just wouldn't want to unwrap you. So th this is what I'm, I'm wondering, though, because this is what he does is really um, it must feel really, really cool to be the person that everybody wants to, like, take a picture with. Everyone wants to come over and hug. Everyone, every child wants to go over and go, oh, my God, that's the yeah. guy. I mean, it has to be. Well, I, I, don't wanna, I, don't, I don't want to say that. It's the reflection. It's, the, it's their reflection of whom they think that character is. And that's I feel, is part of my job, is to try to be as universal as I can. And like, you know, I, I've had like uh, guys 30 something years old come up to me and say, you know what, your, your Santa is like the Santa that I think of in my head. And, and that's what I want to be. I, I want to be that tradition I try to be, uh, uh, to be able to reach and touch that many people because everyone has a certain idea and concept of their Santa. Uh, and they should. Yeah. Uh, what, what did you think, Walt, when you were a kid growing up? What was Santa Claus in your mind's eye? Because mine was the Coca Cola. It's interesting. I, I again in the book, I base my character of, of Santa on my uncle Walter, and uh, Uncle Walter was a big man, and uh, he didn't have a whole suit, but he had a beard and a hat. And uh, when he would come over on Christmas Eve with his family and ex exchange gifts, uh, he would tap on the window. And I would go over and look, and I would see this face. That's all I would see. And, of course, I'd run around. I'd run back to my brother Tommy. And go, oh, Tommy, I, I saw Santa. I saw Santa. And then we'd go back to the window, and of course, Walter was gone. <laughs> he was gone. <laughs> you know? And then my brother was like, yeah, yeah, sure, you saw it right, of course. <laughs> and then sure enough, I turned back around, and there he would be peeking in the window, and it was like, ah, Santa. And I never, for the longest time, I never really put together because a few minutes later, he would walk <laughs> through the door. <laughs> John, this sounds eerily like the episode of The Twilight Zone with the gargoyle on the wing. <laughs> you know, it's funny, too. When I was a kid, I remember tapping on the window. <laughs> and it was snowing and everything. And yeah, my, yeah. Parents, my parents wouldn't let me in. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all week. All uh, week. <laughs> no, that's actually really funny. You were though. out there so long, you grew a beard. <laughs> so you, so we you always know. wanted to run out during that <laughs> snowstorm. We were always, uh, my brother and I, wanted to run outside and you know, kind of feel that that energy and that excitement of the snow at Christmas Eve and. And of course, there there was a year when my brother was had the measles or something, and he couldn't go. And that was, of course, the night that I met Santa Claus outside when I was by myself. Sure. And I remember my brother at the window, you know, tapping at it <laughs> while I'm out there having fun with Santa. <laughs> that's 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 called child abuse, actually. <laughs> well, now let, uh, John brought up the point about like you you having you having children come to you and just saying, wow, this is Santa Claus. Have you ever had somebody come meet you that you were like, wow, I can't believe this is him, like somebody famous, but you had to stay in character because you, you couldn't break character? Yeah, well, you know, when I'm in character, I, I, I stay that way. Uh, you know, there was a, a lot of times celebrities will come to the theater, and uh, I remember coming down to the deck after, you know, like three shows, and long day and i saw two little twin boys in the in the hallway and they looked up and they saw me but i just you know had a show to do and i was tired and it was a long day and being human being human and <laughs> as i got in my sleigh i realized that i i'm not human and i went back to those those two little twin boys adorable and I sat down on the steps with them and talked to them. And uh, a gentleman stepped out from the side. And I looked and I saw this little black jeans. And then I, I looked up and I saw a little black shirt and a little black vest and these big 
glasses, horn rim glasses and a little black hat. And it was like my heart was beating because it was like, oh my gosh, it's Elvis Costello. And I call it my monkey brain is going, oh, I, I wanted to say, oh, Elvis, I love your music. I have a picture with you. And, uh, and I didn't. And it made me feel so good because uh, they took out their cameras to take a picture of Santa with their children because it's, it's not about him. And I tell people the story because I, I help Costello not as a rock star, but as a father. Sure. And, right. uh, and most of the, you know, most of the, the people that, that, uh, that I, all of the people, the celebrities that I've had to deal with uh, have been gracious and, and lovely and, because they believe. It, it, they're, we're like children. If you believe, that's the secret. And it's that's not cool. just at Christmas. It's, it's, it's all the time. You have to be able to choose to believe. And you can believe badly, too. But if you believe in a bad way or if Santa says naughty, uh, then that's what you're going to get back. Uh, you, did, you get what you put out. Did you did you actually say, okay, or, uh, can I take a picture with you also? Did oh, you get no. a picture with him or, or say, you know, email it to me? No. no. He played his, he played no. the job. But, you know, I, what I find super interesting. Well, I don't want to do that to them. The right. kids. Uh, they, you know, he, they, they need a chance to be Normal. a parent. And Normal. A yeah. Normal person. Yeah. 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 I get but, it. But what's super interesting here is that he's being human. He's going to his, first of all, it's very funny to hear somebody say, I'm on my way to my sleigh, <laughs> which is <laughs> way, how, how many people get the opportunity. To say, if I had a dime for every time I said that. <laughs> you'd have a dime. And, <laughs> and then, and then the, the other thing is, is that he's on his way to his sleigh. He's getting ready to, you know, do his bit and he's tired or whatever. And he's got to do a show. And then he sees those kids. And then you go back and you realize, wait a minute, I'm Santa Claus. I got to go back yeah. and play the play the role that I'm bred yeah. here to do. Uh, yeah. That acknowledgement shows a consciousness of you, Charles, that an awareness to like what he's really supposed to be doing in that moment, uh, and and he and he catches himself. That's a yeah. really, really yeah. wonderful story, showing the difference between an actor, the idea of what Santa Claus is, and the idea of who we are as people. It's really, it's got all of that combined. It's this dichotomous. Well, you know, I, I take it as a, as a, uh, a great responsibility. Of course. Uh, yeah. That, and it, and it's, and it weighs on me because, you know, uh, I wanted to be able to work miracles. I wanted to do all the things that Santa does, uh, but I, I can't, I, I, that, that's not, that's not what Santa does. You know, uh, are you are you limited in what you can and can't say to people? Like if you're working at Radio City Music Hall or at a television show, or whatever, now is. I'm sure that the script is like really. <laughs> well, I I make sure of that. Yeah, that's, I make sure of that myself, and that's why I think that uh, people that know me trust me enough to know that uh, I take I I take the character seriously. Um, and and as I said, when I was Ebenezer Scrooge, I didn't. You didn't, right? I didn't right. Scrooge. So well, it's because I, I, you know, Scrooge was the classic. Scrooge was the man. Santa. Oh, everybody does Santa. You know, Santa. I didn't even. I didn't even want him the name on my jacket when I first started. But then I started to realize the impact that this character has on. On not only individuals, but as groups and and the world. Yeah, you know. Um, so yeah, it's not a you know, it, it, uh, it's not like I was playing Satan. Uh, right. Well, the I, word Santa comes something from the word Satan. If you think about it, I mean, there's so, oh. so, right, isn't it like Santa and Satan? I mean, well, it's a, the, the it, letters it, are in there. Think, the letters no, I'm are not all saying that you, Charles. Is, <laughs> I'm not saying it's you, but I'm saying thanks. What, if you look at if you look at the words, the word Saturn. Well, yeah, Charles, Charles the word. you remember the one thing before we started? I said, "Is there anything off limits?" 
There it is. <laughs> well, no, I just want to bring this up. The word Saturn is came from well, Saturn. It, Saturday came from Saturn, yeah. right? Well, it, it didn't come from it, but yeah, the spelling is close. And actually, there was one time in the show where we had a number where uh, actually Santa and Mrs. Claus do a big a big band number because Mrs. Claus uh, that's what she wanted for Christmas. So Santa set it up, and we did a big number. And behind it, they they floated a big a big sign lit up that said Santa. Yeah. <laughs> so you I, thought it did. In retact rehearsals, when it came down, someone said, "Oh no, it says Satan," and it, it didn't. <laughs> but, uh, it's very close. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's the same it's thing. You just switch any end. No the relationship. End. No correlation. None, <laughs> none at all. <laughs> What about what about I um, feel the body and nice? <laughs> you, you have a you have a contract, obviously that that you 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 deal with. Can you are you able to like go to hospitals and 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 do all that kind of stuff? Oh, we have. Like, I've done that. I do it a lot. Uh, we okay. used to do it quite a bit. Uh, you know, uh, back in the day before you had to wear a mask, and sure, uh, especially when. Uh, uh, years ago, we used to have a lot of touring shows um, of the Christmas show during the season. And yeah. Um, I can imagine a kid's yeah. face. But you know, while you're doing a show like that, it's really hard to uh, find enough time because there, there's so many. We do sometimes up five shows a day. Uh, wow. And there's just simply is not enough time. Charles, how many how many shows do you do in the month of December, do you think? Uh, me personally, or the run of the show? Well, uh, you, you're the, that you're in. You're in all of them, aren't you? Well, I used to be, but I, I can't do five shows anymore. It's too difficult. Okay. I, I just don't, you know. I'd, in your heyday. I, I, I wouldn't have time to sleep. <laughs> uh, and if I don't get rest, then I can't, I can't sing. So they were just... There's just a lot of you don't have the Santa stamina. You need the Santa stamina. Well, you know, it's like I was saying before. Uh, you know, I, I, uh, uh, one has to learn their limitations. Of course. And I, yeah. I, I want to do, and I used to do all the shows. I used to do all the shows all the time. Uh, but I was younger, and the shows were different, and you know, things were different then. And and Charles, you were raised in Kentucky, you said, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're Kentucky now. Let, let me just just real, real brief question though. You when you get the opportunity, I mean, of course you're an actor, you're playing characters all the time, I would imagine, but when you get the opportunity to go to New York and do something like that and be the center on some major project for the very first time, how does that that must be a very exciting kind like you're the guy that's picked out of so many people right. to be that guy. That so I, actually, my first job at Radio City was uh, Walt Disney's first Broadway production, and I played the Wicked Witch. Get the hell! Nineteen eighty. Snow White, the Seven Dwarfs, in nineteen eighty. Yeah. So that was my, you know, my my first awe moment of of having to work on a Broadway and a big show and. Uh, just you know, learning. I was still learning. I was a young guy, and um, you know. And then, as other pieces, other roles came, but a role like an iconic role like Santa Claus, uh, it it doesn't it you know uh, to be able to play the role and as a real actor, as a real character. And not just a, a fake beard and a ho ho ho. Uh, that's when I learned the impact that that character and that actors that people have, uh, you know. Uh, and it, it's hard to realize about you make those impacts until it starts to come back to you. And somebody, you know, thirty years after you did a performance that changed their life comes back to you and tells you <laughs> right. I'm telling you how old I am, but you know, uh, that's, that's, 
that's when you know you start to realize that it's like wow you know this is this is really has an impact full circle is what it did is did you did you have to audition for that santa part or was that like I hey did we audition well uh uh bob yanni was producing the show and he had produced snow white and um uh, uh they had asked me to take over the role of Ebenezer Scrooge. And I auditioned as Ebenezer and uh, uh, Bob Yanni came up to me afterwards and he said, uh, will you audition for Santa? And I said, okay, uh, do you have any, do you have a script or do you have any sides? And he said, no. And I said, well, what do you want me to do? And he said, I want you to be Santa. And it was at that moment that the spirit of my Uncle Walter <laughs> came down. And all of a sudden, I did an improvisation on Santa Claus that I was Santa Claus. And I, I don't even know what I did. That's funny. Yeah. And, 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 and then Mr. Yanni came up to me afterwards and he said, can you come back later to read with Mrs. Claus? What, what I, he's saying is that you were inspired. I ex which, yeah. by the way, yeah. Santa is in spirit. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah, there you go. go. A lot of people, a lot of people don't know this, John, but you know who else auditioned for that Santa part also? Elvis Costello. <laughs> and he missed out that way because he because he had <laughs> they were running around the halls he couldn't he couldn't control <laughs> he, he has a way of pointing you in the right direction so, <laughs> i'm a big fan of his all right so how can how can people get your um uh, your book again well speaking uh, of amazon uh the barnes and noble anywhere they sell books and I put them. I put in the chat. Uh, there's an Amazon link in the chat. This is it. That, not that you could grab it from here. And there's also a Barnes and Noble with a much shorter link for Charles' book here. And if you'd like to see what Charles' book looks like, you can see it right here. That's so Charles. It's got, a, it's got a Santa hat right on the front, like this, right on the front. I mean, mine's fake. His was real. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so that book. And and just again, this is a book about. Santa Claus is real. The Christmas table, the magic of believing. Okay. Yeah, this is great by Charles Edward Hall. And uh, please go out and support that book and uh, say hello when you do it or it's leave a really comment there for Charles. It's a great stocking stuffer. So. A great stocking stuffer for the season. Well, Charles, that you're, you're mine, certainly a pleasure. A friend of mine's brother uh, called me up the other day, uh, Sunday morning, two weeks ago, and said, Charles, I read your book this morning. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Hey. <laughs> How uh, long is that book? Oh, it's it's very it's a very quick read. Quick it's, read. Not, it, it's not. Uh, uh, that's actually one of the criticisms I get is that it's it's too short. Yeah, well, it goes too fast. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, know, we wanted to do a book that uh, for adults, but could be enjoyed by children. That's why we wrote it as a fable, which is interesting too. I was writing a memoir of, of how my life is Santa Claus. And that's when my editor uh, uh, asked if we could write it as a fable. And Very cool. Do they make it in Braille for somebody that wears ugly jackets? <laughs> <laughs> I love that jacket. You guys, you guys are going to want this jacket. <laughs> yeah, I know. And you know what? You wear it well. Thank you. You're very it's that it's Munster very well. It, it tells a lot about you. You're cheap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, when you got a 30% coupon at Kohl's, you use it. <laughs> hey, Charles, you are a pleasure. And uh, yes. I can see you have the King's English as an actor. We would love to see you in anything that you do. Um, and thank you for even popping on here. We really appreciate it. And I hope people go out and support that book. If you like, once again, it's in it's in there, in there, and on Barnes & Noble right over there. And once again, if you want to know what that book looks like, it's right there. And believe that's all you have to do. Believe. believe. And, and thank you thank you to Randy Chaplin for, for, uh, for, hey. for hooking you up with us here. This was a, really yeah. during the season. It was a pleasure. We yeah. refer to him as the tall elf. The tall elf. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't sound tall. tall. And you know what? I have to tell you this. I have 
so many uh, Jewish friends that that tell me, oh, you know, I believe in Santa. I love Santa. I love Christmas, but I'm Jewish. And right. Santa always tells them, don't worry. All my elves are Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> and those gifts will be on sale after the New Year. Yes. yes. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. You're a pleasure. Charles, thank you so much. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Thank Same you. Thing. Catch us on Cool Crap We Love. If you like what you see, I'm on JohnPeasy.com. Cool Crap We Love on YouTube. And you can catch us all uh, as well. Where else can we get us, Walt? You can get us on Facebook. You can get us on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to our channel, and we get these things out. It's so great. Thank you again, Charles. Happy holidays to you. Take care, Walt. Change.